What's up guys? I'm Hendo and today I'm making Batwoman's cowl from her live action look in the new CW show. I've also made my pattern free in the caption below in collaboration with Nerdist. You can also check out the Nerdist YouTube channel to see the full version of this cosplay. I'm gonna make the cowl out of foam so that it's cheap, thin, and flexible. So let's get crafting. It's all about humanity. I have a life cast in my head, but you can totally use any mannequin. It's just gonna take a little bit of extra tweaking to fit your features perfectly. I'm using heavy cardstock paper to help with the shape of the cowl. The ears obviously need to protrude from the side of the head. Batwoman's cowl is pretty angular, unlike Batgirl's super smooth cowl. So with that in mind, I'm actually folding the paper in half so it comes to a sharp point and help with some of those prominent features. Her ears, cheeks, and nose are noticeably pointier. And I'm using a marker just to make sure that things line up where they should. And now I'm covering the head in plastic wrap. I'm using a heat gun on the plastic wrap just to sort of make it shrink down and fit a little more snugly. Make sure you use the safety mask and don't hold it in one place for too long or the plastic will just melt. And now I'm adding a little bit of plastic in places where there are gaps. Then I'm covering the whole thing in duct tape. This is really gonna help make it all one color and make it way easier for me to see the shape. I'm adding a bit more cardstock to make some of the features a little bit sharper. I decided they just weren't quite pronounced enough. So now I'm wrapping in plastic again and adding more duct tape. Now I'm drawing out my pattern. I'm using a lighter color first, just in case I make mistakes or change my mind. Once I have it figured out, I'm gonna finalize it with a black marker. I'm doing the back two just in case I decide I wanna do the full cowl version. I'm making these little black tick marks to show exactly how the pieces fit together. This part is super important. I also label each piece numerically, and I've labeled the sides alphabetically just to show which sides attach to each other. Now you can cut out your pattern. I recommend taking a picture first as just a reference guide. Even though everything's labeled, it's a little bit easier if you can see exactly how it goes together. For those who don't want to go through this patterning process, you can just use mine, which is in the caption. Now it's time for assembly. I've transferred my pattern to regular craft foam. There are a few important cutting techniques to remember when it comes to foam armor. First, this pattern fits together exactly, so make sure that you're cutting on the inside of the sharpie line so that the pieces don't end up bigger than you want them to be. Second, you'll want to keep in mind which sides are meant to create peaks or valleys. On my pattern, I've marked these sides with green and blue dotted lines. If you want your pieces to create a peak, you're going to want to cut it in a way that the top side is longer than the bottom side. I'm illustrating this with thicker foam just so that it's a little bit easier to see. You can increase or decrease the angle of the cut to change how intense the peak is. Peaks are marked with blue dots on the pattern. If you want pieces to create a valley, you're going to want to cut it at an angle so that the bottom part is longer than the top part. Again, you can adjust the angle of the cut to change the intensity of the valley. Valley cuts are marked with green dotted lines on the pattern. Some people find that it's easier to use a cutting knife to make those angled cuts. You can also use a Dremel or sander to sort of make those cuts a little bit smoother and easier to glue together. This technique is a little bit trickier with craft foam, but I basically just lay my scissors sideways and cut to create that angle. But since the foam is so thin, this honestly doesn't matter that much. If your angles aren't as intense as you like, it's okay, you can always just have a smoother cowl, or you can use foam clay to create even sharper features. When I made this cowl the first time for Nerdist, that's actually what I had to do. Once it's all cut out, I like to arrange the pieces so I can kind of see how they go together. I'm making sure to add contact cement on both sides that are being glued together, and I do multiple pieces at once just because it takes a little bit of time for the glue to dry and become more tacky. If you're having an issue of the pieces not really sticking together, it might be because you haven't waited long enough for the glue to become tacky. You can also always use masking tape to hold the pieces together in place. Here you can see those angled cuts at work. These eyebrows look very pointed. You can assemble the pattern in any order you like. I just have the markings and alphabetic lettering there to give you a guide, but do whatever you think is easiest. I definitely prefer to assemble each side and then glue the two halves together. Sorry, my battery died before I noticed and I had already assembled both halves together. One thing I really like to do with foam patterns is to reinforce the backing with masking tape. I found black masking tape, which is pretty dope, but it really doesn't matter. Nobody's gonna see it from the inside of your face. But this is really gonna help reinforce the seams, especially when we move on to sanding. But before we get to that, I'm gonna put on the cowl and make sure it fits me well. For reference, I'm five feet tall, so I'm pretty small. You may want to increase the size of the pattern, and there are instructions for how to do that on the pattern itself. I decided that I am going to trim a little bit from the eye openings just so that I can see a little bit easier, especially with fake eyelashes. 
So now we're gonna do some sanding. Make sure you only sand the seams of the cowl that are supposed to be flat. You don't really wanna knock down the angle on the ears, eyebrows, or nose. If you're sanding there, it should just be to clean up those angles. Make sure that you only sand in one direction. If you go back and forth, it will probably make the seams really uneven. This also isn't a make or break step. If you're not very experienced with sanding or you're a little bit worried about it, feel free to skip. So now we're gonna seal the cowl. I usually use Plasti Dip, but I decided to try out Flex Bond this time. The consistency is really similar to craft glue and you can water it down if you're having an issue with streaking. I only did two coats. It's pretty different from Plasti Dip. It's definitely not as rigid and it's really flexible. For this cowl, I don't think it matters too much what you seal it with. Since it's on your head, you're probably not gonna bump into as much stuff as you would with like body armor. So feel free to just use whatever you need to. I painted the whole thing with regular black acrylic paint. I thought that I was filming, but I guess I wasn't, and painting took all of like two minutes, so I'm sorry. Kate's cowl is actually a half cowl. She covers the back with this long red wig, so that's gonna make it way easier to attach this. I'm gonna use elastic. You can actually sew elastic directly to the foam as long as your stitches aren't too close together. You can also reinforce those stitches with more flex bond, plasti dip, or hot glue. And that'll make sure that the stitches don't rip out. I really want to be able to take mine on and off, so I'm going to use elastic bands with snaps. Now you don't want to attach the snaps directly to the elastic because it'll stretch and the snaps will fall out. Something I recommend is actually something called sewing snap tape, which is basically just this strip of a sort of canvas cotton fabric with snaps already set in. You can get a couple yards of it for a few bucks at like Joann's or my but then you don't have to set snaps yourself and it saves so much time. So I'm basically gonna cut out a couple of these snaps and just sew it onto the elastic, then attach the elastic onto the mask. And this is what that looks like. I also added some extra straps at the top just in case I wanna sort of bobby pin it up in place. So now the cowl is pretty much like the one in the show. You can stop here and just add black makeup around your eyes to blend with the cowl. In the comics, Kate has white out eyes, so you could do that version if you want to also. In theory, you could also just make them temporary so that you could do both. For white lenses, my favorite method is to use a splatter screen. I also do this for my Spider-Man lenses. I've spray painted one side black and one side white. These are actually pretty easy to see through. It's kind of like wearing sunglasses. If you find that you can see your eyes past the white, just add another layer of splatter screen. So all you have to do is cut out a piece that's about the shape of your eye hole. Tape it on or hot glue it if you want it to be more permanent. Just make sure that none of the metal edges are poking your face. If you want to get extra fancy, you can also bend it with your fingers or over something round to give the eyes a more three-dimensional look. Hey, it looks pretty nifty. And with that, you've got a kick-butt Batwoman cowl. The pattern for this is free on my Patreon because I don't really have another website, and it, I don't know, it's free. Sorry. But if you do feel like supporting me, thanks. Don't feel like you have to donate, but I will ask if you please can tag me the first time that you share it so that I can see your work and share it too. If you're interested in my full Batwoman cosplay, please check out Nerdist video. You can see me make the whole suit, cowl, and accessories. And don't forget, Batwoman premieres this fall only on The CW. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Until next time, I'm Hendo. Stay crafty. Stay crafty. I'm not scary. I just got back from TwitchCon, so I don't know if I'm sick or I've just lost my voice. It's a little scratchy, but I think it just adds to the Batman ambiance.